All right, so here comes the grammar section of competency one for the Texas ESL supplemental exam number 154. And we're going to take you back to grade school. So here's your history slash grammar lesson. So there are eight parts of speech in grammar. We have nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, articles, conjunctions, and prepositions. So going back to these, nouns is the most basic. It's people, places, things, and ideas, everything from friends to Jennifer to world peace. Pronouns replace nouns. So instead of saying Caden, we say he. Instead of saying Karen, we say I. Instead of saying uh, bottle, we say this. And those are pronouns. Verbs show some kind of action or they show being. Run, jump, dance, clap. Also be is a verb. Is is a verb. Have is a verb. Adjectives describe nouns. So if you remember back in the old days, maybe you did some Mad Libs when you were a kid and my favorite one was always sticky, and it was a sticky computer, it was large, etc. Describing. Adverbs either describe verbs, or they describe adjectives, or they describe other adverbs. So a lot of them end in ly, but not all of them. I could say that it is very quiet in here, and the word very is describing how quiet it is. Or I could tell you that you are listening attentively to this webcast. Articles let us know that a noun is coming. They signal a noun. And these are words like a, an, or the. Remember when working with English language learners that not all languages have articles. So this might be something that we actually have to introduce. Conjunctions connect together words and phrases or clauses. Um, of course, you know, we have our conjunction, junction, what's your function, hooking up words and phrases and clauses is exactly what that song says. And there's a huge list of conjunctions that we'll talk about later and divide them between coordinating and subordinating. But anytime we're linking a group of words, we're joining them, that's a conjunction. And prepositions, the word position is right in there for you. They show your relationships in space and time. So back in the day I used to teach fifth grade grammar, we had preppy the squirrel, and anywhere preppy could go was a preposition. If preppy can go over the tree, under the tree, he can stand before the tree, beyond the tree. Um, he can be there until the tree falls down, or he can be there soon. So he's been there since the tree was a sapling. Anytime we're describing that relationship with place and time, we're talking about prepositions. So in terms of nouns, we can divide nouns into certain types of nouns or categories. The easiest is common and proper nouns. So that's the difference between an uncapitalized girl and a capitalized GG. We also have count versus non-count nouns. Pretty self-explanatory. You can count a count noun. You can't count a non-count noun. So I can count pencils, but I can't count stuff. I can count logs, but I can't count wood. I can't say I have four wood. I can say I have four pieces of wood, logs of wood, sticks of wood, bundles of wood, trucks of wood, tons of wood. All of those are count nouns, but wood or water, water is a non-count noun. I would have to put it into ounces, cups, gallons in order to make those countable. We have concrete and abstract. If it's concrete, I can see it, I can touch it. That's something like school. I can take a picture of a school. I can put my hand on the building of a school. I'm in a school right now. But I can't put my hands on education or unity or freedom or inspiration. It's not a physical thing. I might have a physical representation, and that's a symbol, but the abstract noun is abstract. Then we have compound nouns, and we have collective nouns. Compound nouns is any time we join two words together. There might be a space in between. There might be a hyphen. There might not. So desktop is a compound noun, mother-in-law, or water cycle. Collective nouns describe a group of things. So a team is a group of people. A family is a group of people. A herd is a group of cattle, or a pack is a pack of wolves, or a packet can be a group of paper. So it's all together collectively. Types of pronouns. We have personal pronouns, which refer to people. Pretty simple. I, you, he, she, we, it, they, him, her. Uh, we have subject pronouns, which would show up at the subject of a sentence. So these will be probably towards the beginning of a sentence. I am talking. You are listening. He is not here. She went to lunch, etc. Object pronouns receive the action of the sentence. They're just objects. 
give the book to me. The teacher, that's the subject, told us to put the books away. I'm receiving the, the action of the sentence, and these will have a tendency to come more towards the end of a sentence. Relative pronouns relate ideas. So if I'm relating the idea who loves cheese to my dog, um, my dog who loves cheese, I'm relating who loves cheese to my dog. We've got who and the more archaic whom, which, whoever, whomever, whichever, and that. We also have possessive pronouns. I can't decide whether or not it's cute that my one and a half year old has developed possessive pronouns now because everything is mine, 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 mine. Uh, my computer, mine, yours, his, hers, its, ours, theirs. If it shows possession, possessive pronoun, pretty easy. Reflexive pronouns, you'll notice that they all end somehow in self. So we've got myself, yourself, himself, herself, ourselves, itself. I looked at myself in the mirror. He was talking to himself. If you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. Then we have indefinite pronouns. Life-saving tip here. Because of something called the bystander effect, if you're in trouble and you say, someone call 911, no one will call 911 because you didn't make it definite. Use a personal pronoun. Say, you call 911. Similarly in the classroom, if you say, somebody pick up that trash, nobody will pick up that trash. It's indefinite. It could be anyone, anywhere, anytime, anything. It could be someone or something or nobody or no one. It's indefinite. It's not definite. Okay, next we're looking at verbs. <clears throat> we have verbs that we talk about in terms of tenses, which is when something's happening. In the simplest term, it's past, present, and future. Walked, walks, will walk. And this is simple verbs. You also need to know about progressive verbs, also referred to as continuous verbs. This is showing that something is in progress. So yesterday, we had been walking or we were walking. Um, in the present, maybe right now, I um, am walking or she is walking. Or in the future, we will be walking. Or one that just became relevant, my computer was running out of battery, so I had to get to a power outlet. Then we have perfect verbs. What you need to know to get through the test is that if it has has, have, or had, it's perfect. So past tense, had walked, we have walked, we will have walked. That's in the simple per perfect. Perfect continuous. Yesterday we had been walking for two hours before we found a gas station. My mother has been walking two miles a day for most of her life. Tomorrow, we will have been walking for two years now. Auxiliary verbs are like those little verbs that come along and provide support to another verb. So yesterday, we were sleeping until the phone rang. That's the auxiliary verb were helping us out with that past progressive verb, sleeping. My son is ignoring his teachers. I hope he's not doing that. But if so, then that auxiliary is, is helping out the ignoring. Um, I have never bought live bait before. Here we have one of those perfect verbs going into bought. One type of auxiliary verb is a modal verb. And this is one that I just found on Google. Uh, modal verbs tell us about possibility, necessity, or obligation. So it's dare, need, must, could, would, should, ought, maybe, will, shall. Um, Modes of possibility really is what we're talking about with a modal verb. Linking verbs tend to be little verbs, and when working with the LLs, we don't want to overlook those because sometimes it's the little words that throw us off the most because nobody bothers to teach them to us because they seem too obvious to them. But to a, a language learner, sometimes it's the, it's the little things. Um, we have in the sentence, Elliot is a superhero. The word Elliot is linking to superhero. So the word is is linking those two ideas. So another type of verb that's a little bit new to me, I'll be honest with you, I hadn't come across this until I saw it on the practice test, is a stative verb. And here are some that are related to feelings that we don't use in the continuous tense. It's like they're telling us the state of something. So I like your new haircut. Ah. Uh, I don't mind. I am in the state of being someone who doesn't mind, okay? Oops. 
So something can be in the state of appearing some way. We wouldn't say he is appearing annoyed. We would just say he appears annoyed when we're working with a stative verb. I like you, not necessarily I am liking you. Uh, I know McDonald's has their I'm loving it, but that's more advertising than necessarily perfect grammar. So our very last thing that we're going to be talking about here are coordinating conjunctions and subordinating conjunctions. So coordinating conjunctions, these are our fanboys that English teachers like to use for, and, nor, but, or, yet, or so. And subordinating conjunctions are things more like after, although, as, if. They, they're subordinating conjunctions because what they do is create a subordinate clause. And it's a subordinate clause because it can't stand alone. It's dependent on another clause in the sentence. So we'll take a look at some examples here of compound sentences joined by coordinating conjunctions. If I have two sentences, I finally got home. I had to do the dishes. These are two different complete thoughts. Or I could look at I had to do the dishes, period. My husband made dinner, period. I can use a coordinating conjunction to lean those two complete thoughts together. Alternatively, I can have a complex sentence. What makes it complex is that it has two different types of clauses in it. It has a dependent clause and it has an independent clause. For example, when I finally got home, I don't know what happened when I finally got home. It's dependent. It's not standing by itself. I had to do the dishes is an independent sentence. So when I put them together, when I finally got home, I had to do the dishes, I have a complex sentence that's linked up by the subordinating conjunction when. Because I didn't have to make dinner, hey, it's a world of possibility, right, if you're not having to make dinner. So it's an incomplete thought, so it's a dependent clause starting with the subordinating conjunction because. Because I didn't have to make dinner, I could take a bath, period. I could take a bath is independent. So those are two types of sentences. I haven't seen those too much in the test. Um, I don't know if you will. Uh, you do have to sign that you won't talk about the test. So all that we really have to go on are some of the practice tests that we've seen. If you have any other questions, if you're hearing Katie, please feel free to just email me and I will do anything I can to help you out. Good luck.